Hey guys, Colton Tack on Sonic Boom Film 101. Welcome back to my walkthrough of this Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP Home Edition. And yeah, this is part 15. And yeah, I think last Thursday I had done part 14. So I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> and you really thought I was done with this walkthrough. <laughs> well, no, of course I'm not done with this walkthrough. I'm just going to continue on more of this walkthrough, so we're going we're gonna to turn on the computer now, turn the speakers on. Hey, right, there's the Dell startup logo. And it seems that Windows XP is starting up now. <clears throat> yeah. I miss you, Dell Dimension 4600, after, like, waiting a week. I am very happy to see you again. Um, I don't even know why, but I'm very, very happy. I'm way back to my old home. Alright, and now it's time to log myself on. I hope it's still, like, fast after this waiting. Wait, did I type it in right? Or did I just, like, put in an extra letter? Oh, crap. I should have put in an extra letter. That means I typed in the wrong password. You know what? Let me try this again. That was not a good idea. Okay. Uh, well, okay. It's taking time. Give me a minute. Okay, I typed in the password. Now let's see if it lets me in this time. I mean, it's going to be slow after all, even though I, like, waited a week. <clears throat> I still kind of miss this computer nowadays. I mean, yeah, I think I started missing this computer starting in 2013. I haven't used it ever since. But now, since it's 2018, and it's, like, the end of April, and it will be the end of May in a, in a week... I am very excited to use this computer again after, like, almost waiting for, like, almost six years. It's been, like, a very good computer, and I kind of miss him. Yeah. Wait. Wait a minute. Uh. Wait. Oh, yeah, the volume's on. I didn't even know. But seriously, dude, I... Okay. Like, um, I can't even understand, but, wait, this computer is probably from 2004 for a reason. Oh, crap, I've waited so long. Come on, computer, I know you can do this. Man, this computer, it won't even log me on, like, I just typed in the password correctly, but... I mean, it says, Welcome, Colton. Loading your personal settings. Um, but am I hearing the startup sound? If not, then that's terrible. Like, where's the startup sound? Can you come out, please? And don't scare me. Okay, um, yeah, I mean... This is an old computer whatsoever, but... I don't know how old this computer is. Is it, like, 14 years old? Like, I never even understand it how, but, I mean, Windows XP is, like, se oh, well, let's just say it's, like, almost 17 years old. Yeah, it's still not doing anything. Like, it's been four minutes. I just want to get to the next Microsoft Money tutorial soon. So, can you just play that startup sound for a minute? Okay, I can't hear anything. There's a this point out the hourglass is like going so long like it would take just I can't oh oh crap Did I just hear it? I don't know if I did because it sounded quiet. Uh seriously dude okay just I'm just gonna pause it for a minute because I can't hear anything. Okay, I think it's getting me in, but, um, the reason is that the computer, 
it probably, like, well, for some reason, the computer had, like, a little bit of, like, a low volume on the speaker right here. So, I couldn't hear the XP startup sound. At least I wasn't scared. I mean, well, I got a little scared, but, yeah. Oh, God, this computer, it's going so slow on startups. But after minutes and minutes of waiting, it starts getting pretty fast. So, yeah, I mean, it starts getting slow again when we shut it down. But it doesn't matter if it's slow. I don't mind. <laughs> but, man, I miss this computer. So much childhood memories. And I've I've thought about using this again in 2012. Like, probably for a few months. Like, I probably used this for half of 2012. But, wait. I believe the sound kind of got muted or something. I'm going to have to, like, pause this for a minute. All right, I'm back. I had to do something about the sound. I mean, the speaker wasn't turned up loud enough. So I had to, like, I had to turn up the speaker dial volume a little bit more up. So, yeah. That's that. Anyway, time to go into the start menu. So that way, I, Colton Tackett, can get ready for the next Microsoft Money tutorial. Oh, by the way, it's time for me to, like, go into some narrator stuff. Well, not really yet, of course. I might have to go into text-to-speech before I eventually move on to, like, the Microsoft Money tutorial I'll be doing. So, yeah, this computer is going a bit slow, but, yeah. As you can see, there's this icon, this Tonka Workshop thing. Um, I can't use it on this computer because there is no CD-ROM drive. Instead, I would eventually, like, do it on my Dell laptop that's in the kitchen, and I could be able to play Tonka Workshop. I would just put in that Tonka Workshop CD-ROM, and then I'll be able to, like, play that game again. I mean, it's that easy. I don't even know why. Um, <clears throat> you know what? This is going pretty slow. So I'm just pausing this again. <coughs> Sorry about that. I'm just going to pause this again because that was crappy. I'll be back. Oh, I, I guess we don't have to do that after all. But I think it went away. So, yeah. We're going to go to control panel. And also, like always, this is going to take time for the computer to load the control panel because, I mean, Windows XP is pretty old in this computer. Like, uh, this is an old computer, and Windows XP is such an old operating system. There's the flashlight right here. Oh, and it seems that... Oh, ow, my leg. It seems that the control panel is, like, open, so... We're going to go into <clears throat> sounds, speech, and audio devices. Click speech. Um, I might have to move my legs for a minute. Now I'm going to click on text speech. Minimize does thing for a minute. I'm going to type in something. I'm going to cover the camera up a bit. So that way I can type in something. I'm going to make Sam sound like a raffle copter. <clears throat> oh. Okay. I typed it in. Now, <clears throat> now let's see. Let's hear Sam right here. You hear that? Sam sounded like a raffle copter. Nice. But, but now we need to hear him say what his raffle copter sounds like. <clears throat> All right, now let's see it. Here you go. 
My raffle copter goes swas was 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 So yeah, if you viewers didn't know, if you wanted Sam to sound like a raffle copter, then you just type in S O I. That's how he says the word swa. <clears throat> That's how he sounds like a raffle copter. I mean, if you type in S O I, he just says swa. But anyway, I just want to like get ready for. I want to get over with, with the uh, <clears throat> the Microsoft money thing, so I'm going to have to like go into the program files thing. I click on local disk C, program files, Microsoft money, media AV help, and then we'll go on to. 12 B A and uh, the tutorial we're gonna do is to click on this, minimize it. Balance an account to a paper stamp. Here we go. Charlie, we got our bank oh, statement in the mail today. Down. Since our account is in Microsoft Money now, shouldn't we balance the two? I want to make sure they match. Good idea. It won't take much time either because money makes balancing our account so simple. Let's do it now then. First, we open the account we want to balance, and then we click Balance This Account over here. Sounds like a good start. We type in the ending date from our statement, the ending balance. And fill in the rest if we have service charges or interest. This looks like a detailed bank statement, with our deposits up here and our checks down here. These are the unreconciled transactions that have yet to be cleared. So what's this information in the left pane? These are the steps that guide us through the balancing process. First, we mark transactions and money that have cleared the bank. Every time we clear a transaction, these numbers change. When we get this difference down to zero, we'll know we're balanced. To start comparing, we can set this page to look more like our bank statement. Oh, I see. We just go up here to view and choose the group deposits then checks withdrawals view because that's the format of our statement. Now it'll be easy to compare our statement against our information in money. But in our check register, we would just mark an X for each transaction that had cleared the bank. How do we do this on the computer? We use this column called C. This is where we mark transactions that have cleared. Oh, I get it. So let's start clearing. The statement shows that there is a deposit for $1,216.82 on December 1st. Here it is. When I click the C column for those checks, money marks them C for cleared. There's another deposit for $1,016.44 on December 8th. Got it. Now for withdrawals. The statement shows that checks 1634 to 1648 have all cleared. Here they are. Okay, they're all cleared. What are those payments marked E? E means they're electronic transactions that have already cleared the bank. When I downloaded our account information from the bank's website the other day, Money automatically updated the status of these transactions. Looks like someone made a mistake entering the amount for this Contoso Limited check. They don't match. Can we fix it? Oh, sure we can. Just click the transaction, click Edit Here, and then correct the number over here. Perfect. Take a look at this. This shows what we've marked as cleared. I see. And this section tells us the difference between what we've cleared so far and the statement ending balance. The numbers change every time we clear a transaction. Money keeps a running total as we work. When the difference is zero, our account is balanced. But we're still off by 30 cents. And we can take care of that in the third and final step. Let's click next. If we don't balance out to zero, we can either go back and look for the discrepancy, use auto reconcile, or just make an adjustment. Because we're not likely to lose any sleep over 30 cents, we'll just adjust the balance. Great. See, all the C's and E's have now turned to R's. 
So this means our transactions are reconciled and our account is balanced. Now our information in money matches the bank's information. So that's it. That's a tutorial for <clears throat> balancing an account to a paper statement. And this uh, <clears throat> on the next part we'll be learning about entering an investment transaction. Anyway, we're going to run out of time now because I have to turn this off soon. Oh, we're going to turn it off anyway. So Man, this was completely quick. But we're going to turn it off now. <clears throat> Alright, that's about it for part 15 of my walkthrough of the Dell Dimension 4600 running Windows XP. Uh, the next part, we'll be doing part 16 tomorrow, hopefully, because tomorrow is the last day of school and I'm very excited. This is Colton Tack and on Sonic Boom Fan 101 signing off. See you next time and have a great time. Goodbye.